Let me ask one question to Bob. Hey, Bob. Yeah, Dan. Bob, when you when you were uh, and everybody at Top Rank was looking for an opponent for Terrence to fight uh, in this spring uh, time frame, how, was Khan sort of at the top of your list, or did you have to sort of go through and see who was available, or was he because he's got a big name, he's got a lot of accomplishment, you know, he's got a fan base. How, how did you guys go about deciding that you know let's let's target Khan to make an offer to as opposed to any other uh, fighter in the welterweight division? What the first thing is, what's the best fight we can do, and. I have always been an Amir Khan fan. And I, I say this without, uh, you know, not because I'm promoting him in this fight, but I remember back in the day, years and years ago, when Amir Khan uh, joined uh, Manny Pacquiao in his camp and was a tremendously skillful sparring partner. Amir knows we were, uh, uh, I think, in the Philippines. He he, yeah, he participated right. in that camp. And so I, look, I know a little bit about boxing. I'm not one of the matchmakers who r- really uh, are, are tremendously skilled. But I've been around over 50 years in this sport. And I know what makes a good fight and what's a competitive fight. And I'm telling you that Amir Khan against Terrence Crawford is a hugely competitive fight. Styles make fights, and this is the first pay-per-view event that we're doing with ESPN, and we value tremendously our relationship to ESPN, and I want going in and at the fight, so going out, everybody to say, hey, this was a great, great fight, and I really believe that the fight will be a tremendously interesting competitive fight and that's why we made it that is the truth that is why we made it there are other fighters that uh, uh, other welterweights uh, who are coming along and may one day step up and fight for a welterweight champ i'm sure they will like the eastern europeans of uh, disputin and kavaleskis but this fight instinctively i knew and my matchmakers uh, agreed was a very, very competitive fight. I mean, you have to understand there are very few fighters who have the boxing skills of America. Very, very few. So I look at this as a very competitive fight. One last quick question for Bob. You know, what was the what was the thought process of sort of making this fight into a pay per view? Was it you know the the matchup itself, or was it a, a time where you know Crawford his two, his fights on ESPN television drawn incredible ratings and record high viewership? Was it a matter of simply you know this was the time, regardless of the opponent, or simply the matchup warranting a pay per view event? <laughs> I mean, it, I'm sorry. The, it, it, this, it's really a combination of both. It's the matchup uh, that warrants the pay-per-view, and it's also because it's such a big fight that, you know, this is professional boxing, and the fighters have to be compensated because it's such a big fight. And therefore, you cannot rely uh, on uh, a network to constantly come up with big, big money uh, uh, as a rights fee. So if the fight is big enough, you have to then go to the public and say to the public, hey, this is a terrific fight. You have to support the fight. Now, sometimes the public says no. But, you know, if we have confidence in the event, they'll say yes. So that's really what it's about. We can stop playing the games of whether a fight should be pay-per-view or shouldn't be pay-per-view. The first question, is it a really good matchup, really an interesting event? And then secondly, can is it affordable on regular television? Can a rights fee support the fight? And in this case, uh, the we have a splendid event, and we have uh, fighters who have to be and should be compensated, for their performances, and therefore you go to pay-per-view. That is the mindset. Everything else is noise.